Here's 13 build tips for building better design factories in update 8. Now this will cover some new tips thanks to some update 8 changes as well as some key older tips that are still beneficial to know whether you're new to the game or a seasoned pro. So if you do find that you learned something new in this video please do hit the thumbs up and if you do have any uh, tips that yourself would like to share with the community do let us know in the comments below as well. Also I do want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor which is war thunder but we'll be talking more on that later now in update 7 we received the blueprint designer this is allowing us to easily copy and paste designs and more often than not every factory will benefit from using a few blueprints for example you can create modules that snap together to create working factories or build complex or repetitive decor pieces to be used for the facade of your factories now even having a refinery blueprint or 4x4 foundation grid can be a great way to build factories fast do use them and if you're looking at specific blueprint designs for your factories you can also check out my video on must have blueprints in satisfactory i'll put a link in the description below to that now one big change in update 8 to blueprints specifically is the ability to lock and nudge in now smaller intervals these blueprints so to do this lock the blueprint in place by pressing h and then you can nudge it using the arrow keys however now we have the ability to nudge it in smaller increments by holding control whilst the the blueprint is locked and then using the nudge arrow keys now most of these items can be nudged left right forwards and back but i do hope coffee stain plan for a vertical nudge option soon as well now possibly the biggest game change in update 8 other than lumen which we will talk about shortly is the ability to delete whole blueprints in a single click to do this select the delete tool and cycle to the blueprint dismantle option by pressing r this allows you to dismantle whole blueprints in a single click which is great for rebuilding moduled designed factories or you can just go to the normal single delete and you can delete whatever you want and create variations to your moduled blueprints if you're going for a particular look or theme in your build. You should also categorize your blueprints. This is because you can use the radial dial holding E when you have a blueprint open. This will allow you to cycle through the different blueprints in that category and consider categories for foundations or factory lines, load balances and decorational pieces. I have a subcategory that is just for light designs, which has proven particularly fruitful with Lumen. This can be very beneficial when you're building because it makes it so much quicker to build and select different blueprints. Speaking of lighting, you can now rotate signs directly on walls. This can be great for producing various lighting designs, but if you want to skip using copy and paste for lighting on signs, you can actually create a blueprint to save time when it comes to placing your signs and lighting them up because they'll already have the lighting option selected. Now Lumen is a huge change to the game and can really make your factory stand out if you're using it. But before we talk about that, and whilst we wait for update 1.0, why not check out War Thunder, today's sponsor. It's the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made with over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships spanning over 100 years of history. You choose how you want to fight in this dynamic combined arms PvP battle, and every vehicle is intricately designed in this combat experience. Whether you're looking for quick action-packed battles or realistic tactical experiences, War Thunder offers various immersion levels for all playstyles. There's nothing I love more though than swooping down in a jet and taking out the unsuspecting victims or enemies down below. So what are you waiting for? Play War Thunder today for free on PC, Xbox X and S series as well as PlayStation 5. And if you use my link below you'll also get a large limited time only bonus bonus pack for free, featuring multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for vehicles, and much more. I'll see you on the battleground. 
But back to the topic of Lumen. Now, Lumen can make or break any factory if you're choosing to use it in Satisfactory. It truly levels up the aesthetics, but it can require a lot of work because everything is so dark. That being said, if you go inside factories, you'll notice there's this white fog. So I highly recommend if you're building within a factory, you use the command line r.fog space zero, then press enter. Uh, and you can open this with the tilde key for those of you who don't know. This gives you the truest lighting to work with within your factory and you'll also find that now you'll need to use a lot of signs and lights to lighten up an area. But one thing you should also consider is the use of shadows. So do you use buildables such as beams to block out light as this can be a great way to create depth using those shadows to your advantage. Now signs don't have to be exclusively used for light either, or signs for that matter. They can also be used as walls, whether lit up or coloured. I personally like to snap other walls into these to create some really interesting angles. Something that just gives your, your factories a little bit of chef's kiss to it. There are also two different options when it comes to signs. You can either use matte or glass texture. Now matte can work well for walls, but if you're wanting a shiny reflective sign, do use gloss as it can really make your builds pop. Also, don't feel the need to use a particular colour. Rather than using signs as lights by turning up the emission, you can choose to leave the emission on zero and keep the sign light black and glossy to create a sleek looking wall texture. Now, whenever we talk about building in Satisfactory, it pays to remember that there is a world grid. It surprises me how many people don't realize this still. You can activate it while placing a foundation on the world by holding control. Just remember to use two meter or four meter deep foundations as one meter foundations will not be the same height offset as the two meter and four meter foundations. Though with a little bit of experience, you can blend the different heights together quite easily. Now, did you know that along with snapping some items, there are also ways to have infinite placement points in Satisfactory. Thankfully, it's been made much easier with the use of pillars. Placing them down horizontally, you can place items such as walls on them without any snapping points. This is great for blending walls and complex shapes together. Zoop also came in update 5. It's a placement option which allows you to place up to 10 items such as foundations or walls at once by clicking and then dragging them. Just press R with those items to engage in Zoop mode and now we just need sign zooping in my opinion. <laughs> Barriers are probably the most versatile buildables in the game though. And I've mentioned this a lot, but you can use them to snap foundations to them or replace with the walls by holding a control whilst you have a wall placed on top of them. This allows for easy freedom of building without needing to place down your pillars, which can be a little bit more time consuming. And the second most versatile item in the game, I would argue, are beams. Place these down and you can snap pillars to them to create diagonally placed building blocks. Alternatively, use them as beams to create more depth in your builds or use them to block out light as I mentioned earlier. So what do you think guys? Those are my 13 need to know tips in update 8 to help you build better and satisfactory, whether that's faster placement, better designs or just better looking factories. Now if you did enjoy this video, please do hit the thumbs up and don't forget to check out War Thunder for your free bonus pack. The link is in the description and the comments below. But until next time, special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our solo clips patrons, James Owen, Fireflesh, and Treble, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben, Star, and That Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Viking Brit. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.